taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. What is a parable, get, get a lie? What's a parable? It's a serious scene. What? Uh, a dark scene. Dark saying, yes, you're correct. Give me another term, Josiah. It's an illustrated story. Right, an illustrated story. He uses metaphors, a similitude of one thing to another. Go ahead. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. There went out a sower to sow. It's not talking about sowing clothes. What's a sower, Bezalel? A sower. Uh, a farmer or a planter. A farmer or a planter. He plants seeds. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. He said there was a sower. This farmer was sowing seeds. And birds in the air came and ate up the seeds. Now watch this. Here's the precept. Stay in the same chapter. Go to verse 14 and 15. Verse 14. Just verse 14. Verse 14. That's the what sower soweth the word. Go ahead. Verse 15. 15 again now. And these are they by, by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. So that's when your brothers are at camp. Mm -hmm. And someone will come up and be genuinely interested and start to believe and then guess who comes by? Sam Bokum. <laughs> Don't believe that, brother. Don't believe that. They, they pulling your leg. Don't believe that. And then you, that brother or sister that's so simple goes, yeah, you know, you're right. I ain't going to listen to this. And walks away. Or their phone rings. Right, or right, oh. their phone rings, their mama. They hear them, listen to the phone, they walk away. Okay, jump back. Same chapter. We in verse 5. Oh. I want verse 5 and 6 together. Mark 4, verse 5. So that was the first type of Israelite. That's the simple brother or sister that hears. They start to believe somebody says something stupid, and they immediately just walk away. That's the first type. Here's the second type. Come on. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. So he gives the next second analogy. The sower planted the seed, it didn't have root. The sun rose, it just burnt them up. What does that mean? Let's jump over to verse 16 and 17. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Watch this. Who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. That's that brother and sister that hear the word and say, I believe that. Yes, and they're happy. I want to come to the class. I want to get the lessons. I want to get the tapes. I want to get the, I want to do this and do that. Watch, come on. And have no root in themselves. What does that part mean? And have no root in themselves, I'm off. Have no root in themselves, meaning they themselves don't study. They right, don't study. they're not studying. In order to get rooted in something, you got to study. Give me that in Timothy. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself approved. We're coming right back to Mark. I want y'all to pay close attention to this. Second this Timothy. is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Because y'all are not studying to impress nobody up in here. You study him to show yourself approved unto God. So when we're getting on you, because we know who studies and we know who does not, it's for your own benefit. Can, can I yeah, we, uh, the, yeah, the elders say the best. Because you'll see the question showing you not studying nothing. Showing you that you just watching, not study the book, don't do nothing. Then you ask a question that you shouldn't know if you study. You understand? It's not a genius question. It's just like a plain question. The Bible answer it itself. You understand? That's how we know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you, you right. ask who the wicked are. Exactly. Uh, that was a example. Let me tell you something. Some brothers have a better, some brothers and sisters have a better retention than others. Others who do not have that good a retention, guess what you and me got to do? Because I'm included in that. I don't have good retention. What do you got to do, Ima? What we got to do? Keep restudying. Re you got to keep reading it over and over and writing it down. Second yeah, Timothy 2.15. Second Timothy 2, 15, 2 Timothy, you got to keep writing just to retain that. If you got to know you, examine yourself. Just because he hit it one thing one time. He remembered it three months later. Yeah. I don't remember nothing <laughs> the next day. I'm what? But I got to know me. 
So I gotta sit down, I gotta write it over and over and over and over to remember it. I gotta rehearse it, recite it over and over, just to retain that little bit. You understand? Yes. So don't be ashamed of whatever your level is. You gotta build on it. I, I wanna make a point on that about studying over and over again so that it don't slip. Because going back to what we were talking about earlier with the Christmas cows and all of that. How many, most of us are above 20 years old, right? Ever since you was born, every year they played those Christmas carols, those so-called Christmas carols. Why? Because they wanted to get deep into your spirit. They don't want you to forget it. That's right. They, re, it, re, repetition is how you get it. That's how you got to do with the Bible. You have to read the Bible. You can't say, I've read it once and stop. You're going to fall away. You're going you gonna, to you gonna right back in the garbage. That's right. Because you got Christmas bells every year. You got turkey every year. Easter, Easter bunnies with eggs every year, Christmas tree every year. So they're constantly giving you that. They understand the importance of repetition. They understand the importance of constantly giving it to you. Well, you have to give yourself to study. You have to put your head in the Bible repeatedly so that you can resist the wiles of Satan. That's what it's about. It's this versus that. What, what are you going to have your mind controlled by? This or television? Okay, we got to get it out, son. Say it I know some of them is glad I didn't call on that. 2 <laughs> <laughs> Timothy, Second Timothy like 2, people. verse 15. <laughs> Study to show thyself. Let me read it again. Study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Hey, let's deal with that. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. I was telling you earlier how when I was growing up, when it came to history, I was always ashamed. When all the other kids in my class was breaking down their history, I was always ashamed. But guess what? I'm ashamed no more. Okay, I could teach my children they are not ashamed. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, they know that. Boom, 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 color scripture, they know that. So no longer should we ever be ashamed of anything. That's why the importance of study is very important. Because the nations will challenge you in whatever you say. Jesus is black, you're a liar. Oh, I'm not ashamed because Christ is black. Let's go to it right now. And they will be ashamed, okay? Whatever we say, we should never be ashamed because we are studying. Showing ourselves a proof unto God. Right, very good. Come on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You see that word right there? What was that first word he, word he just read? Workman. 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 Y'all, who, wait, 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 I got a question. Raise your hand. Who in here is not working? In Esau's world, I'm talking about work. One, two, three, four. Five, six, okay, only six brothers. Okay, what y'all need to do in order to be that workman and need to not be ashamed goes with studying. Y'all need to come up with ways, hand out flies, pick a day, and say, you know what, I'm gonna go to this location and I'm gonna hand out flies all day. I ain't talking about camp, I'm not talking about camp. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Make yourselves productive for the most high. Okay, like on a Sunday, we sit around a lounge with nothing to do. Get some brothers, let's just give out some flies on this day. Stand in front of this church right over here. Hand them out. Y'all understand that? Don't be scared, brothers. I know that, that's probably the big thing, fear. My mama might see me. Read that again. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. So even when it comes in this truth, all of us should be productive in this truth. Come on. Rightly dividing the word of truth. See that? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Give me another scripture that says rightly dividing the word of truth. Get alive. I don't hear anything. Space of silence. Josiah, give me a scripture that says rightly dividing the word of truth to explain it. Verse 
verse 9. Well, tell me, quote it for me, paraphrase it. Oh. Hello? Okay. What verse are you at? Verse 10. Oh, verse 10. Go ahead, read it out loud. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Right, that lets you know the Bible's written like a puzzle. In order to understand the parables, the metaphors, the similitudes, you must rightly divide the word of truth, which is precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Go back to Mark. We're almost done. Mark chapter 4. What verse were you in? Verse 16. Read 16 again. Mark 4 verse 16. These are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves. That's to have no root in themselves, meaning they're not studying. Come on. And so endure but for a time. And only endure for a time. That's what we always say. This truth is like revolving doors. Musical chairs. Here today, gone tomorrow. Go ahead. Afterward, when affliction or Wait, listen good to this part. Read that slow. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Afterward, you're not studying. It says, when affliction. Or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. Go ahead. Immediately they are offended. I'm going to give you an example. Give an example. <laughs> Notice it says, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake. What's tomorrow? Christmas. So-called Christmas. Some of you know that for the past semi-years, your families got together on Christmas Day, right? Tomorrow, they are expecting you to get together on Christmas Day. You're going to say no. Some of you might go do whatever. And they're going to get on. They're going to persecute you for the word's sake. You're going to say no. The scripture says, like Tim, uh, Corinthians, come out from among them, be separate. Remember that? Revelation 18, 4, 2 Corinthians 6. And they're, they're going to argue you down. You're supposed to come here like we've been doing for the past 20 something years. And they're going to argue, if you don't do it, I'm going to throw you out. Yeah. Now you're being afflicted. You're being persecuted for the word's sake. Mommy, that's an idol in the house. I don't care, baby. You're going to bring your butt here and have Christmas dinner with all of us. You're being persecuted. Okay? You got a wife. You got her wearing them hip hugger jeans. You got me wearing these hot jeans. You like the way my butt was shaped. Or I'm going to reverse it now. The woman. They going home, their mama said, you know, you, you have such a nice shape. Mm. Why you got to cover it up with that long dress? Mm. You look homely now. Why don't you show your body? <laughs> shape what your mama gave you. Look at you now with your head covered. Look at you looking all Harry Tubman like. <laughs> you look old. Now she's being afflicted, persecuted for the word's sake. Well, ma, the scriptures say, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, a woman should not wear what pertains to him. I don't give no damn about that, baby girl. You're a beautiful girl. Shake what you got. Flaunt it. And you got that old no good Hebrew Israelite look. He don't even got a job. Leave it. Persecution, persecution, persecution. Then they show your relatives. <laughs> then they show your relatives. See, you could be like this. Yeah. You with so and so, but look. Look, 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 look at Ty. Look, yeah. look at this one. Look at that. <laughs> Teeth straight and all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now you feel like you left. Damn, you know what? Probably made a mistake. Exactly. So enough of that. That's what's going to happen. Watch. Read, read, read it. Who was reading? I was. Read that part again. <laughs> when, when the word, um, read 17 again. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth, for the word's sake, Immediately they are offended. Immediately you are offended. And you go back to what you used to be, Sam Kuhn. Because you can't take it no more. I'm, every, I'm always arguing and fighting. I can't take it. But if you had just gotten root in yourself, you can endure that little persecution. You can have endured it. Why? Because you had comfort of the scriptures. Okay? Jump back over to verse, uh, what verse was that in the first part? Eight. Verse seven. 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 Mark 4, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Read it again. And some fell among thorns. This is the third type of Israelite. 
Read again. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Jump over to verse 18 and 19. This is the third type of Israelite. Christ is going to break it down for us. Verse 18 and 19. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Read it again. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. So now this group here is not the group that doesn't study. This brother or sister, he may or may have not been studied. But watch what it says, verse 19. And the cares of this world. The cares of the world. Come on. And the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of riches. The cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. And the lust of other things entering in. Entering in. Choke the world. Choke all that you've studied. Choke all that you learned. And it becometh unfruitful. You become unfruitful in this world. What does this mean? The cares of the world. Why do most brothers want that nice car? Why, Josiah? To please the woman. To get, they want not just please her, they want to get her. They want to get that good looking woman. Some of y'all don't want that sister that look like precious. Oh no, there's nothing wrong with her. Some brothers like that. Is she a hammer? Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought, I thought she was up. Now I know. Now I see why. But, <laughs> but some brothers, then you want that Naomi Campbell. You want that Eva Mendez. You want them good looking women. So, what do you do? The cares of the world. I need a car. I need a nice ride to get this woman right here. So in order to do that, you got to push the Bible aside. Because now in order to get that, you either A, you want that Escalade, that Navigator. If you ain't got no dough, you got to start making money somehow. Might be drugs, you might get two or three jobs. And we don't see you no more. Case in point, some brothers you see here, where are they? At work. Where are they? At work. At work. At work. Never make it their business to come in. Read that again, verse 19. And the kids of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Got to have that money. And it's talking about deceitfulness of riches. Deceitfulness. It ain't talking about you getting money the, the proper way. It's the deceitfulness. That's you going about some corrupt way to get the money. Go ahead. And the lust of other things. What? Like, and the lust of... Your thing might not be the car. Your thing might not be the money. Your thing might be Here's something that people don't think about. Power. Mm. Mm. What do I mean by that? Real quick, I'm going to give you a precept. Get me um, 2 Samuel 15, 11. I'm going to show you something. Absalom, King David had a son named Absalom. He wanted power. He had good looks. He had women that touched him. He was, what did it say about him? He was the best looking brother in all Israel. Women used to flock to him. But that wasn't his demon. His demon was power. He wanted the king's seat. This is what he did. Second Samuel 15 verse 7? Uh, verse 11. I'm on 11. Second Samuel 15 verse 11. And with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem that were called. And they went in their simplicity and they knew not anything. 200 men followed Absalom in their simplicity. He, he could talk good. He deceived 200 dumb brothers to try to go against King David. The king! That was power. He wanted power. Here, let's, let's get some more. Give me number 16 and 1. Watch this. Because you got some brothers, that's their demon. Power. You not with my camp? I hate you, brother. I hate you. Mm, I need all them brothers with me. That's a demon. You got it? Number 16. Number 16. And 1. On 1 and 2. Number 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Korah, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses of certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. See that? So those men 
250 men famous in the congregation rose up against Moses and Aaron. When you read this history, it was all about power. That's all. They, they had money. They had fame. What did Moses even said, what do y'all lack? You're above everybody. They said, we want your seat, Moses. Power. Some brothers got a thing for power. Okay? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 16 and 1. Now, Christ wasn't about that. Brothers, some brothers want numbers. Christ was never about that. Christ kept his circle small. All I need is 12 brothers. And these 12 brothers can do wonders. That's the mindset we got to be in. Ecclesiastes 16, Sirach 16 and 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 16 verse 1. This is for the power mad brother. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Come on. Neither delight in ungodly sons. Don't delight in ungodly sons. Though they multiply. Though they multiply. Rejoice not in them. Rejoice not in them. Go ahead. Except the fear of the Lord. Except the fear of the Lord. Be with them. Be with them. Was that it? No. Trust not thou in their life. Neither respect their multitude. For well, one that is just, one that is just, brothers, is better than a thousand. Is better than a thousand. That's, that's the mindset of Christ. Christ said, I got too many people here. And most of y'all don't believe. He used to say hard sayings to get rid of them. Just go, go. All I need is these twelve. And then he came back and said, and out of you twelve, one of you is the daggone devil. He knew that. So don't be impressed with numbers, brothers. Don't think about that. Because we just read, it's better to have one that is just than a thousand unprofitable and wicked Israelites. Let's go back to Mark. Mark 4, and now I want verse 19 again. Mark, Still dealing with that third type of Israelite. Mark 4, verse 19. In the cares of this world, in the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in. Choke the word. When you got that lust in you, it can choke the word of God. It can choke it. I'll give you an example. You have learned the Bible over and over, but you have an agenda. Your agenda is to be the H N I C. You know what what I mean by H N I C? Head nigga in charge. So you will begin to corrupt scripture. Read First John three fifteen for me. I'm gonna give you an example. First John three fifteen. I think that's what I want. Or the two fifteen by hatred. Come on, come on. Got it? Yep. <laughs> you want to hear it? Here you go. Okay. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye knoweth that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Now y'all just read that law. Right? But I'm gonna give I'll use myself as an example. I'm power man. I want I want all Israel under me. And I see different camps out there that's not with me. So I'm mad. I I've, I've read that law over and over. Now you just read from just give me something else. Give me read read from here. Just you just read. Just softly read. I'm not power man, brother. Watch me. Herein is love. I hate you, brother. Not, you know, not, hate you cups, right? <laughs> not, that, not that we it's love God, ain't dealing with you. but you that nigga. he loved us. You know what? And Your nigga, you ain't nothing, brother. You're you you stupid. For our I sake. hate you. You know what? Beloved, you ain't nothing. If God so All loved us, we ought also to you love one another. Character, you ain't nothing. You stupid. No I man has seen God at any time. time. And every video you see with me, I'm attacking him. Power mad. That's right. And will choke the scriptures, will not abide in what these scriptures say. Why? Because I have an agenda. And every man that's under a Negro like that got that same hateful mindset. The word gets choked. The word gets choked. Read verse 15 again. 1 John 3, 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life. And you following a man like that. You got brothers following a man who hates all Israel if they ain't with him. Okay, so back to Mark 4 and 19. Mark again. 4 verse 19. In the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, 
Choke the word. Choke the word. Choke the word. So let's say your thing is women. Your lust is women. You know the sister's married, but you ain't had none in five years. You know the Lord says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know she got a man, but you whispering in her ear. The word is being choked now. It's being choked. Why? Because that lust within you. Okay? Your thing might be money. You know the Lord that says, Thou shalt not steal. But you see an opportunity. Because you know if you get that money, you can get that car. You can get those new that new outfit. And if you can get that cup, that money, you can get that car, that new outfit, you can get big butt Betty. The word gets choked. It gets choked. Thou shalt not steal. It goes out the window. Read that again, verse 19. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter an end. Choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And it becometh unfruitful. Now, an unlearned brother will say, unfruitful, that means a lot of people. Is that talking about unfruitful means a lot of people with you? How do we know that that's not the right understanding? A lot of people following you. We just read it. We just read it. Isaac. Sirach 16 and 1. Sirach 16 and 1. It says, don't glory in a multitude of wicked people following you. Absalom had 200 simple brothers following him in their simplicity. Dathan, Korah, and on had 250 princes of Israel follow them against Moses. So this ain't talk, this unfruitful ain't talking about multitudes of people. This unfruitful, becoming unfruitful, is talking about what? And I want the scripture. Our hands went down now. Becometh unfruitful. The word begin, gets choked and you become unfruitful. Who can help me? Zakai. Galatians 5. Let's get it. Galatians 5. This is how you become unfruitful. Because you can always get a wicked and dumb nigga to follow you to the gates of hell. So it ain't talking about that. Galatians. You stand out there in South Park. You see how many Negroes and Latinos flock to you. It ain't talking about that. Come on. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is... But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Love. That's the first fruit of the Spirit. What is love, Phil? What verse? Where would you go? I don't remember. Get a liar. 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John 5 and 3. 2 John verse 6. Write those down. It explains love. So the first fruit of the Spirit is keeping the commandments. So if you got lust in you, it chokes the word. The one, one fruit, and it says that you become unfruitful, right? The first thing you, that gets choked is love. The obedience to the commandment that gets choked. Uh -uh. You become an unfruitful now. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Joy. You don't got that spirit of joy no more. You, you are teaching in everything. You got that hateful, evil spirit about how much you hate the black woman. How much you hate your people. Joy is gone. You become unfruitful now. Come on. Peace. Peace. There's no peace in your life. You on the street always fighting. A fight breaks out every time you at camp. Come on. Long suffering. Long suffering. You're not patient with the brothers and sisters. Come on. Gentleness. You're not gentle with the brothers and sisters of your people. Come on. Goodness. You're not good either. Come on. Faith. Faith. And your faith is gone, brother. Come on. Meekness. Meekness. You ain't humble to the scriptures. Temperance. Right? Temperance. You're not patient. Against such there Even, is... Evenly temper-minded. Go ahead. Against such there is no law. Against... When you got those attributes, nobody can come against you. Why? Because you're keeping the commandments. You're filled with joy. You got peace in your life. All those things, that's what that's the fruit we're supposed to have. Go back now to Mark 4. Read 19 again. Mark 4, verse 19. In the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word. Choke the word. And it becometh unfruitful. And it becometh unfruitful. You become unfruitful in your spirit unfruitful, regardless of all the wicked Negroes and Latinos you got following you. Jump over now to verse 8. 
This is the last group. This is the fourth type of Israelite. We were in the first type, the second type, and the third type. Now we're on the fourth. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, with that last part where you also read about that the, the word is choked. Yeah. Another scripture for that is, Why trimmeth thou thy way to seek love? Very good. And the lust of other things. You trim the commandments of the Bible because you have a lust of something else. That's right, exactly. Y'all understand that? Yes. Sir. Because guess what? We're going to go, we going to go through these commandments. None of us in here is 100% right. But guess what? As we go through these laws and we catch ourselves falling, we're going to do what? Repent. Repent and get it right. But if you get that stiff spirit, I'm not doing what that Bible says. Because you might be in the midst of adultery. You might not want to get a job. You might be a liar or a thief. If you don't want to repent, what's the only outcome for you? Yeah. We can't kill nobody up there. Yeah? I'm talking about with us. Oh, oh, you gotta go. You gotta go. There's camps out there where you can be in a you can be adult an adulterer. There's camps out there where you can deal with white women. There's camps out there where you can rape be a pedophile or rape children. Blight camp out there. To get poison. Pick your poison, thank you. Pick your poison. But you won't last in here. But you won't last in here, thank you. Yeah, you know what is uh, really amazing about our people, right? Our people, you're looking at the congregation supposed to be just like your house, right? Would you let somebody come in your house to file it? That's the same thing as us. We're looking at it just like our house. Mm -hmm. If you come out here to think you can defile this body, guess what? We're going to kick you out. That's plain and simple. Right. You understand? You're not going to sit here thinking that uh, then there is no correction going out. But there is no judgment going out. It's not that type of place. We're about the commandment. We're going to bow down by this commandment. Then we're going to do this commandment. You understand? Exactly. Now, and I know y'all, y'all know our spirits, our character. We don't put burdens on y'all. It's, this burden is very light in here, okay? Very light. Light, and I'm going to go back to that pedophile thing. Somebody was writing me on uh, the latest video, one of the videos that went up about raping children. I had to laugh. But everyone wants to argue. You know this group that want to argue about being a pedophile. So I came up with a solution. I said, I'm going to prove that y'all, all y'all that talk about raping little girls, y'all a bunch of hypocrites, and you really don't believe that. Let's say you got a hundred brothers that believe that garbage, right? About, it's okay to rape a child. You can do that. That's a dumb, that's that jailhouse Negro stuff. Okay? If you believe that, out of them hundred brothers, or let's say y'all got four hundred brothers, because people always be, they be bragging, we got brothers all across the state, okay? I bet you and guarantee that out of y'all three hundred, some of y'all got little sisters that are twelve, you got, some of y'all got daughters scattered throughout the state that is 12. Why don't you rape them? Then there was silence. Because they know. Because guess what? You want, if all hundred agree to do in that madness, ain't nobody calling the cops on them, ain't nobody putting them to death. But nobody's going to do it. Because they know it ain't right. Everybody understand that? Okay. Let's go back. We're in a fourth type now. That shows you a sick mind. No, right. That shows you a sick mind because after that was said, there was a space of silence for half an hour. Mm -hmm. You understand that? And for them to argue back and forth about that thing, they're crazy as hell. Yeah. I feel sorry for them, brother. I feel sorry for them. I pray that they can come Absolutely. out of that low gutter mentality. I really do. We're in a, they're in the last type verse of vision life. Verse 8, thank you. On Mark 4, verse 8. And other fell on good, and other fell on good ground. And did yield fruit. See that? And did yield fruit. This fruit ain't talking about multitudes of people. It's talking about that fruit within you. Okay? And that fruit that you got is going to multiply because you're going to teach it to other brothers and other sisters. They're going to learn. Read the whole thing so we get the thought. And other fell, and other fell on good ground. And did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. And increased. Go ahead. And brought forth some 30 some 60 and some 100. Right. So meaning what? This truth is going to be taught. And they're going to, they're going to learn the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, temperance. Okay? And it's going to multiply and multiply from brother to brother, sister to sister. Until we get that one third that the Lord is looking for. He ain't looking for that grimy, evil brother. 
that grimy, evil sister, he's not looking for him or her. He's looking for that one that got the fruit of the spirit. That's obedient in his laws to the best of their ability. Not making excuses. That's what he's looking for. Everybody understand that? Okay.